Can everybody hear me? So, I'm Omar Heather. I am a physician scientist. I work at the Department of Surgery at Johns Hopkins Hospital. Today I'm going to talk about something that is close to our heart. The title is Save Eloquence. And it is actually a classic boy meets girl story. Now, Eloquence is the girl. She's extroverted, she's a smooth talker, and she's passionate about what she believes in. And the boy? The boy is science. Introverted, logical, and interested in numbers and statistics. Eloquence and science met some 4,000 years ago, but just for convenience sake, we're going to say four years. And they met and they hit it off instantly. Why wouldn't they? Opposites attract, right? They were a perfect complement to each other. So things kept going along pretty smoothly for about a year or so when something happened. One fine morning, science confronted eloquence and said, I have been told that you were seen with that guy, that smooth talker, politics. <laughs> now, the p-value for your association <laughs> with politics is less than 0 0.05. Therefore, I reject your null hypothesis, which was that eloquence pleaded that they were just friends and nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> and she pleaded and pleaded passionately, but the logical science would hear none of it. And that was the end. Mm -hmm. Things moved on and science has been alone ever since. <laughs> <laughs> and it was okay until about a month ago when somebody bought science a copy of Microsoft PowerPoint. <laughs> now, as I mentioned, science was already an introvert, had difficulty maintaining eye contact. Think about it. Now what he was doing was coming into a lecture, putting up 120 PowerPoints, <laughs> All clutter slides and running through them in the space of 45 minutes. <laughs> Essentially teaching himself. You have all been there, right? Mm -hmm. Lectures, presentations, in which the professor is essentially teaching the concepts to himself and not you guys. <laughs> now, while science was doing this fantastic job, our old friend, the smooth talker, politics, was using eloquence to attack the very heart of science. <coughs> concepts that form the core, evolution, and concepts that are absolutely critical for the advancement of science and mankind. For example, stem cell research and healthcare reform. And people were listening to him. And why is that? Why is that people were listening to politics? Because the human mind does not work in a linear, logical fashion. We want emotions. We want empathy. And that has to complement the logic, the statistics, the statistics, and the numbers. So, well, this is a bit of a mess, right? On one hand, science is not doing a fantastic job. On the other hand, it is under attack. What are we going to do about it? Well, we have to get science and eloquence back together. We have to find a way to do that. And on my part, how I'm doing this is that I came to Johns Hopkins five months ago. And I've been uh, setting up and teaching an aggressive program on public speaking, 
It's sort of relationship therapy for friends of science, <laughs> who all of us are. Don't get me wrong, I'm no theater actor. I am an MD and I also have a degree in statistics, so it doesn't get any worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> what we teach people, scientists, is to establish the connection with your audience, bring out the passion that you have for your subject, and basically make an impression. And why do we want to do that? Well, it's not a global concept that, you know, we need to do this because, you know, science is in trouble or something. This is very personal for all of you. In your professional careers, you are going to reach as far as these three things take you. First, how well you speak. Second, how well you write, and third, how good your ideas are. So it is about my career, it is about your career, and it is about saving something that is very close to our heart. At the end of the day, that is the only hope that we have for the future. And I want all of you to support the initiative to save eloquence, to save science, your kids are going to thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much.